Running up the score. Jerry Napoleonello. The Cowboys made two mistakes in the last three years. One was letting Dak take over for Romo and not having Romo come back in. And two was releasing Des Bryant. Superstition, screw that. Let's pick this bad boy up and walk it around the ice. Kevin Donlin. The NFL, like every league, is a business. And in a business, you have a job. And let me tell you something. You always have a boss. No matter who you are, you have a boss when you're in the organization. The New York Jets, you know what they need to do with their second round pick? They need to just start taking it and lighting it up on fire. This is Running Up the Score, your one-stop spot for all things sports. Join in on the conversation by calling in at 605-562-7085. Now here's your hosts, Jerry Napoleonello and Kevin Donlin. All right. <laughs> Running Up the Score, we're <laughs> back. It has been a very long time. Yes. A very long time. Uh, and I'm just I'm glad that we got back in here. But what I'm even more happy about uh, and excited about it, the NFL season's back. Yes, it is in full throttle. The I think yesterday was the the final of all the preseason games, I believe, no. or they're they're finishing up over the weekend. I think Sunday, maybe. I'm, I'm not even sure. I think I, mean, I actually think all the games were played last night. This is a big um, reason why you know. The, the preseason needs to go, <laughs> you know. I got well, even for like, the, you know, we're, you can't be a bigger fan than me. And I, I had no caring yesterday about no, I, any of these games. And I didn't either. Of course, it's big for these football teams to have this final preseason game. You know, we're talking about trying to get these last guys their roster spots, and it, you know, obviously this is their livelihood, and yeah. you know, it's very important to them. But you know, just for the average fan, it's uh, it's irrelevant. Just you know, get the regular season, the games that matter started. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, so. The teams are shoring up their 53-man roster. They have to make all their final cuts. Uh, I think it's either today or tomorrow that they need to have all their final cuts done. Um, so, you know, we, we've we been trying to get into the, you know, I guess you could call this a studio um, for, a right. <laughs> for a while. For a while now. <laughs> and, um, you know, it just it hasn't been working out well for us. Um with busy schedules and, and stuff like that. So uh, we weren't able to get a full in-depth preview of uh, the NFL um, like we wanted to, but we're going to do that today. And uh, it's going to come at you fast. It's going to be, you know, we're going to get everything in you know, the point is, today. Is that, you know, the point is that we're trying to, you know, we get to the point, you know, uh, you know, there's stories and distractions and schedules oh, yeah. and who are they playing and they have a tough schedule. I'm going to tell you if you have a good football team, you know, uh, whether a team is designed well to win games in the NFL. Yeah. And obviously things happen in the NFL day in and day out, and everyone talks about their scheduling and do they have a difficult schedule, do they not. If you're a good football team, you find ways to win. It doesn't matter who you play in this league, and the, the league has been so competitive, and it's probably more competitive now than it's ever been before that it's just going to be a fun ride like it always is, and this is what makes the NFL what it is. Absolutely. Um, so I guess we'll we'll start it off here. Um, actually, before I start, um, I'm running a uh, pick'em pool at my job. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, if anybody wants to join it, let me know. Um, I will send you the details. Uh, just, you know, direct message our, um, you know, Instagram or Twitter – um, at R-U-T-S Sports. Uh, you can also, if you have my number, you can text me or call me, whatever you want to do. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get you into it, too. So I'm hopefully you I'm, can in, get... I'm in enough pools, man. Yeah, but I mean, one more. Can, we don't have... Oh, no, it will yeah. hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's hurting a wallet. I promise you that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Running Up the Score presents NFL Preview, NFC East. So we'll start off. Uh, NFC East. Start off, you know, this... I'll be honest, you know, listen, we come from New York, and, you know, obviously when you think of the NFC East in New York, you think of the New York Giants. And when it comes to the New York Giants this year, um, it gets really disappointing, you know, pretty quickly. And, 
you know, like I said, we're going to speed through these, but you know, for the New- we'll start with the New York Giants, and you know, obviously they they made some upgrades, and they're going to be a better team. Yeah. Uh, but I've gone around. I've, I'm from New York, uh, and basically, I'll, I'll speak to Giant fans all day long. And you could talk about Saquon Barkley. You could talk about the upgraded offensive line. You could even talk about Daniel Jones with the way he's performed in the preseason. You know, the point is with this team is that, you know, I've asked a lot of Giant fans to name me three defensive players on their roster. And they truthfully can't. Yeah. I mean, that's the biggest problem the New York Giants face this year is that, you know, their offense might be able to spark a lot. And obviously everyone thinks with Noah Odell that might not be a big uh, upgrade, but it absolutely is. I think everything else is more important. Uh, having a better offensive line, you're going to see a different Eli Manning out there. You know, people think that Eli Manning uh, has come back to his original roots. But the point is that this offensive line is finally going to be able to block for them. And, uh, the, you know, they made a couple of additions that were, you know, clutch. But uh, unfortunately for the Giants, I, I don't see it any more than six wins. Uh, you know, I'm not even talking about their schedule. It does not matter who they play this year, um, what, you know, what their division looks like. You know, the, the point is, is that what I see is two games against Dallas, two games against Philly, and I see four automatic losses there. And, I mean, you heard it here right now, but, you know, and I could be proven wrong very easily. Again, anyone can win any week, but uh, the Giants just don't have the same to keep up with these teams. You know, they might be able to sneak a win or two against Washington and maybe a couple other teams, but for the Giants, I'm, I'm looking at top six wins. Yeah, uh, I mean, with the Giants, you know, um, all I can remember is sitting right in these seats uh, the night of the draft and the Giants drafting Daniel Jones. And we thought it was hilarious um, I mean, honestly, you Giant know, fans you, you, killed them. <laughs> you, I was shocked for the pick, obviously, but you know, at the same time, uh, you know, Daniel Jones is not, you know, wasn't the biggest problem that they had right now. Obviously, the quarterback position I didn't think was an issue. I think Eli Manning is still Eli Manning. Uh, the upgrades in the offensive line are going to be the difference maker and why yeah. this team wins more games than it did last year. But um, you know, they're not going to be the worst in their division. You know, that moves us on to the Washington Redskins. I really don't see the Washington Redskins getting out of fourth place in this division. Uh, they might be in play for one of the worst teams in football this year. Um, you know, they just don't have enough. Uh, obviously, you know, they do have a dominant left tackle. They're not even going to be having him right now, and they have uh, issues with him, you know, at the same time. I think he's I think it, traded. Yeah, he will, and it won't be until midseason when this team is in a crisis, and obviously he's going to have themselves a lottery pick at that point. Uh, but I don't see the Washington Redskins winning any more than four games tops. Uh, it's probably going to be less than that. Uh, Washington will probably be on the better end of it. And then it brings us down to the last two teams, the teams that do matter in this division, which will probably cause a humongous debate because there's no doubt I'm going to probably go with Philly to win this division. I think How? the talent on both sides. How? The talent on both sides. The, you know, the trenches. Carson Wentz hasn't played a full season. I'm not even t- – Wentz, it, it doesn't come down to just quarterback. If you want to talk See, about like, just the quarterback. This is my this is my argument with, you know, people saying that the Eagles are going to win this division. I, like – they're a good team. There's no they're, doubt about it. Yeah, they're you know, a good we're team. We're talking about but, the honest, you know, get to the point with these teams. And but what, it, like, what have they done differently from last year? Nothing. So, like, what makes them better than the team that actually won the division? I think, it, honestly, you know, you, you saw what happened with, you know, the whole Carson Wentz and everything else. No, I know. But, it, like, even before he got hurt, he wasn't playing well. No. Uh, so, I, to be honest with you, I think this, you know, and I, and, you know how you know. Obviously, if you you watch the show, you listen to the show, you know how superstitious I am. Mm-hmm. I don't like picking the Cowboys for anything, um, but I just think I think overall, if you look at this Cowboys team, this Cowboys team is so talented. No, they so are. Talented. I mean, I, I'm not and taking you know anything what? away from the Cowboys the weakest... when I tell you Philly's going to win the division. I'm just saying when it comes to the trenches, both these teams, and you're going to see battles. The weakest gonna... part of this team is their quarterback. And that's Dak Prescott. That's the weakest part, and not, he's not a weak. You can make the same spot. argument. You can make the same argument right now for Philly with that being their worst. Uh, but right now, when it comes down to it, you know it. I know it. They, the Eagles have arguably one of the best offensive lines in football. And the reason so why I say I, I was just about to say the reason why it's <laughs> one of is because another team that shares the division with them also has one of the top and offensive lines. Not to mention their offensive line didn't play well last year. They still won the division. They were missing Travis Frederick the whole season last year because of the uh, autoimmune uh, yep. disease or and whatever. They got him he back. Had. There's and the, they yo, got the him Dallas, back. Dallas is written to have a great season this year. What I'm saying is that it's going to be a battle. Bless wow! You. <laughs> right in mid sentence. On the air. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> no, but like you know, 
obviously the, the question mark with the Cowboys right now is their their contract dispute, obviously with Zeke. He still has two years left on his contract. It's gonna be an interesting I mean, that's, one. That's really to be the, to be totally honest with you. That's what could give Dallas the edge. And but you know, right now it's you know, this I is I think my Tony prediction. Pollard is is a very formidable uh formidable uh, back up for Zeke, and I, I think and I, I could really... I could put on the Dallas Cowboy pads right now myself and find myself, you know, <laughs> running for, for eighty five. Honestly, I could easily <laughs> rush for eighty five yards under there, and I'm not a fast guy at all. So, you know, obviously, the, you know, the Cowboys have a very good front, and again, on both sides of the football, Demarcus Lawrence returning is a huge uh, deal for. I mean, you know, Jalen Dallas. Smith and Leighton Vander Esch playing together for a full season. Uh, you know, bar, you know, again, there's so, so much left to go in the season with barring injuries. I mean, I feel like the Eagles have a lot of depth on their D line on top of having the talent. You know, again, you, you're talking about injuries, they, and you know, one injury to this Cowboy defense couldn't put them in a lot of trouble. But you know what, the Cowboys uh, secondary got a lot better. Uh, Cheeto Awuzie is a lot better this year. He's going to be a lot better this year. He's got another year under his belt. Uh, Byron Jones, stud. Uh, Xavier Woods, another year under his belt at the safety position. Stud, um, you know. Then you then you look at you know uh, the preseason and Donovan Wilson, a, a third or fourth round pick or whatever it was, had three interceptions this this post uh, this preseason. They had eight in the preseason. They had eight interceptions in the preseason. Their secondary got a lot better. Um, I just feel like the the defense was great last year, and it got even better. To be totally honest with you, um, so. You know, though that's that's how we're feeling. So Dallas, uh, obviously, and I'm gonna yeah, go with like Philly. I don't like to say that. You no, know, I know, but I understand. I mean, listen, I'm just you know, I understand where your points come at, and obviously, this division is gonna come down to who wins the games. You know, the matchups between these two teams. So yeah, you know, obviously, you know, a lot to play into it, injuries and everything else. But I'm just, you know, I'm going with Philly. I feel like Philly is well, uh, Philly is arguably one of the best talented the, the NFC all around East- teams. The NFC East has a tough schedule. All teams have a tough schedule. We're playing the uh, NFC South. NFC South. So we might as well go on to the NFC South and talk about the NFC South here um, with Atlanta, New Orleans, Carolina, and Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay. Yeah. Uh, just totally. You know, we'll go. You know, I'll go in the order from bottom to top in this division, and uh, you know, it starts with a shocker here. I, you know, I think Carolina is going to finish in dead last in this division. Uh, I think when you hear of a Cam Newton that's limping, that's a humongous concern. You've I mean, even the talked guy's about. Hurt. We've heard in fantasy football about how you know, uh, you know, Cam Newton is uh, moving down in draft, you know, draft boards, and uh, you know, the point is, is that when you hear a limping Cam Newton, it's it's big trouble, and that puts this offense in a uh, very human state and not like you know almost freakish you know yeah and you know their defense has lost a lot of key parts uh there's no doubt in my mind i you know i don't they see them add, they did add gerald mccoy which was it's it's, it's yeah but they they just lost the weight they just line. lost way too much there was a lot of no, guys I, there was a huge listen, list of amount of guys they lost on their defense they're not gonna be the same team at you all. know what their defense um is what's gonna keep them around really to be honest with you yeah. um somewhat you know luke keekley as long as luke keekley stays uh, stays healthy um, that defense is is yeah, on we'll a whole see. another you know, you come level. Come talk to me week six about it. So well, I, yeah. I, I listen. I I I'm not disagreeing with you, um, but maybe not in the fourth spot. I don't know. It, yeah, it, well, it, you it's got, all, you also, it's well, moves on to our on, next on, team. Obviously, it's coming. Moon. It's coming down to the Saints and Atlanta in that division. But you know, we go to Tampa. You know, I have him finishing third. I think Bruce Arians is going to make. Uh, it's it's going to bring the best it's a, out of Jimmy. It's going to be a very big difference. It's gonna, yeah, uh, it's going to be a, maker in that team. It's going to be a big difference when it comes down to it. Uh, and I think you're just going to get more production out of Jameis Winston and that offense than you're going to get out of Cam Newton. And I think the defenses on both these teams are very well, similar right now. I mean, look at what Bruce Arians did to Arizona's offense. Um, and then after he left, look what happened after. So. Yeah, but I, I, I mean, just. Overall, like if you really look at the the way you know his tenure in Arizona, their their offense was always good. It was, um, and they moved the ball quickly. And I think you're just going to see Jameis Winston be able to adjust to this. Yeah. I think you're going to see a different kind of Jameis Winston. I don't know how good, like fantasy purposes and stuff like that, but uh, you know, I think you'll just see a better offense coming out of Tampa than you will from Carolina, and that's why I'm giving them the edge. I mean, you're getting the third spot in the NFC. It's going to be close. Yeah, it's not going to be. So. It's going to be like a. a you know, one loss, one win, different kind of thing. Well, we should get down um, to the two teams that. But really you're gonna, gonna get uh, like again, just like the NFC East. There's a two team race in this, of course, in this division. And it's between uh, the Saints and Atlanta. And to be honest with you, um, I, I I'm not, I'm not a big Atlanta fan. Um, 
you know, yeah, they do have Julio Jones. I understand that. Well, they have a um, lot more than I'm not, Julio. I'm not a big uh, Matt Ryan fan. Like, I, I, I just – he doesn't really do anything for me. Um, my pick is, is going to be New Orleans in this division. I think that just – Drew Brees always just brings a firepower with this, with this team. I think their defense uh, is going to be a lot better um, as well. I just uh, overall, I, I think this is a very similar standpoint to the Eagles in Dallas. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to go they're, with Atlanta. They're, they're I, about I, the same. I do like Atlanta because I like their linebacker core. It sounds crazy. It has nothing to do with either one of the offenses. I think both offenses are very similar. Uh, you know, Brees has got you know the Camaras and uh, you know the Michael Thomases, but uh, you know beyond that, it's a little bit of a question mark for the Saints. So it makes you wonder if they have enough depth uh, behind that. Um, obviously, losing Mark Ingram could be a big hit. Yeah. Um, you know, but I I really do think Atlanta's offense is going to make some strides. I know you're not a fan of Matt Ryan. I've seen Matt Ryan do it before, and he you know I I assume he'll do it again. I mean, they made some upgrades on their offensive line, absolutely. Their defense, their linebacking core is very young and very talented. Well, that's the thing. Like uh, Atlanta, I I know their defense was was young, um, was drafted players, um, and, and you just see you see talented players in their first second year or whatever. You see them, and you like you see the signs of like, all right, this kid's gonna be good. You know, once you get to like second, third year, then it, it that, like that's when it starts to show. So you know, Atlanta has a lot of young guys on defense. I think a lot of that's well, gonna Saints show. Saints also have a lot too. I mean, but it's so really gonna Saints. be a showdown between so the two of them. That's what I'm saying. Same I, I, deal. I just I just feel like uh, the Saints are gonna edge them out by one or two wins. Yeah. I, I think I it's gonna be a close. it might it might come down to their matchups, just like Philly and yeah. Dallas. You know, we'll go right back. We're, you know, we're gonna head over right over to the West NFC West. You know, again, we're gonna just start from bottom to top. Uh, these are just my predictions and what I'm thinking on the stand. Standings. Uh, I'll probably come nowhere close because the NFL is what it is. Yeah. But you know, for me, I, you know, I'm going to take a stride here. I'm, you know, I think Seattle's going to be the worst team in this division. No. Yeah, I think no. so. I really do. I, I, I really think they could be one of the worst teams in football this year. Um, I'm not a fan. You know, I love Russell Wilson. I know what he's able to do, but his uh, he's just got no help there. I mean, aside from Tyler Lockett, you, you name me their number two receiver right now. No, I, right that, on the spot. Name the number two receiver for that team. I they just don't have you. enough. They no, don't I, have enough. Listen, I just I don't know it either. I so it's see, not even like I didn't I didn't see much. Because I, I watched Arizona a little bit because I just wanted to see. I think they're going to struggle, too. I don't see this being a, you know, it could be Arizona, if anything, to finish dead last. But I think Seattle's going to be in that area. Because I, I, I was just I was just interested to see Kyler Murray similar to the play. Giants to Washington in yeah, this division. Yeah, like I, 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 was, I was interested to see Kyler Murray play. Um, from what I saw, his first game, he really zings the ball. Like, it, he, he puts a lot of mustard behind it. Um, I just think his comfort level is going to be what's going to be a just, stride, especially in his rookie year. Everything around him, though. Um, We're talking like four you know, and three wins here. I, I, yeah. I'm really not – this is really just almost a hatred for me for Seattle. Yeah. I don't like the way their team's designed. I, I feel hate, like they've I, lost I, too listen, much I on defense. I hate Seattle, bud. <laughs> they've lost too much on defense. They don't they have. have enough firepower yeah. on defense. I mean, you know, even last year, guys like Sheldon Richardson, you know they needed players yeah. because they were going out and trying to get someone like Sheldon Richardson, which had a lot of damage, and he's not even on the team anymore. So. Yeah. It shows you what kind of player Sheldon Richardson is, you know, with all due respect. I mean, uh, that they weren't even interested in bringing him back. But again, I think this team just does not have enough talent. I think they have, you know, they obviously have a great safety. They have a great middle linebacker. But beyond that, folks, there there really isn't much talent. I don't know about the pass rush. I don't know about the coverage. It, it's going to be scary in Seattle. It's going to be disappointing. By Russell far. Wilson will do whatever he can to try to win games. He's going to be the Wilson, reason why they have wins. If they do have any wins <laughs> at all, it's going to be because of Russell Wilson because he's got no help yeah. on that offensive line. He's got no help with his receiving core. His running back situation is questionable at best. I mean, Chris Carson's a great player, and so is Rashard Penny, but again – you need a lot more than that. You need the offensive line. I mean, Chris Carson can be as good as he wants. They could run the ball as much as they wanted to. They ran the ball a lot. But at the same time, you know, uh, the yards per carry were, was an absolute disgrace last year, and that goes on the offensive line. And it continues this year because they didn't even address it by any means throughout the entire offseason. That's why they're dead last for me. Arizona's not much farther. I think that just Kyle Murray shows a little bit of poise, could get them a couple of wins. Uh, yeah, but after that first game, he kind of like – It might be like – He really a, didn't show much – I mean, he he's he's got a good arm. Um, it's going to be interesting how he uses his legs uh, in the NFL because everything's obviously a lot faster. Mm-hmm. All the players are a lot faster. Yep. But I mean, in this division, 
like there's no question about it. It's it's a one team division. I just don't. Yeah, and it it's, comes uh, down to it comes down to the Rams. And but the you Rams know, Rams are uh, the Rams are we're in the Super Bowl, and they're gonna get close to it again. Of course, and they're gonna be one of the best teams in the league, guaranteed double digit wins. I mean, the defenses they're playing in this division, Absolutely. we've already talked about it. It's nothing intimidating whatsoever. No, this is it's nothing like I, it used to be. To be honest with you, you know, San Francisco always gives the Rams, uh, you know, a problem. And I actually, um, I, it's funny that we had skipped right over them. I'm actually a fan of Arizona. I mean, uh, San Francisco this year. There's no doubt they're gonna be the second best team in this division, potentially a playoff team. Yeah, but it all it 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 all centers around, you know, if Jimmy Garoppolo could stay healthy. You know, yeah, you know, absolutely. It, it, like, listen, but we also know, at the same time, I w- I watched San Fran's offense move the ball without him. Well, yeah. So I mean, it it really is almost like a a system. But basically, what I'm saying is he kind of notches it up. Of course. Listen, we saw how good of a quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo was. Um, there's no denying that. But it's just the team around him. You know. I th- I feel like it, it like you, like you said I think it got a lot better, um, you know and it just I, just this division I, I don't even think it's gonna be close. Um, no, I, I don't think it'll yeah, be close by any. Just, but I, I mean I honestly it could San be Francisco, some wins. San Francisco is gonna get some wins. Though. I think they can find a way to get nine to ten wins. Yeah. I mean I really I'm not like in Seattle and Arizona. I really don't think they're gonna make strides at all. I think San Fran makes the most strides in this division. I think the Rams continue to stay on top. You know we'll move right over NFC North to so the NFC North. Um, this is a little bit of a shocker as well. Um, I do, you know, obviously everyone's going to probably plant this team in the bottom like they usually do. And it's the Detroit Lions, and I'm going to do just the same. I, I don't think the Lions made enough moves in the off season. I think they continue to have a mediocre offensive line. Um, their defense is nothing intimidating. They've lost a lot of key players. Uh, you know, they they're probably going to stand pat at the bottom of this league. And then obviously, I got a shocker here for you. I think Green Bay finishes right after. Um, we've seen. That Green Bay has got Aaron Rodgers. You know, we see that, you know, it's a new head coach. They haven't got, been on the same, you know, ordeal by any means. Uh, obviously, you know, he's already had things to say about his ideas of practice. You know, Aaron Rodgers is becoming an almost difficult player to coach. And if I was the head coach of this team, I'd be looking for the next quarterback just on the basis that Aaron Rodgers is a very difficult player. You know, personality-wise, and it, it's really, really bringing this team that. down. It's bringing the team down. Green Bay has nothing intimidating on defense. I, I would not be worried about their defense coming no. to us. You know, if I, you know, if the Jets are playing on the Green Bay Packers, I'm not worried. And I'm a Jet fan. Yeah. But I'm not worried about their defense <laughs> at all. You know, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to put them third. Uh, I, and I, listen, I, I agree. Um, so far, I I've I just never, think the two teams with the better defenses, which is obviously Green Bay, I mean yeah. uh, Minnesota and Chicago. I've never been a fan of uh, Matthew Stafford, so uh, like I, with him, I kind of see I, I saw the writing on the wall. I when you have Calvin Johnson, you know all you have to do is just throw it up. Um, it's got a lot more difficult. Um, after Calvin Johnson left, um, now they lose Golden Tate. Obviously, because now he's with the Giants, suspended mm-hmm. for the first four games. Yep. Ha ha. Um, <laughs> I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. No. Nah. Um, but you know, the, this this division. We uh, don't know the problems you know, with the Giants. Oh yeah. Um, I I agree one hundred and ten percent with uh, your Green Bay pick because, you know, like you said, uh, Aaron Rodgers is is becoming that guy that it's like, wow, he's he's really so good, so talented, yep. but. You know, I just don't want to deal with his crap. Like yeah, basically, with his that's, personality and his personality. And, and like is, you, you're hearing, like from ex teammates, that he was just not a good person. Just a pleasant good, person is yeah. the best way to put it. You know, you put yourself in. You're, you're making your teammates view think, you like that. It's it's just not a good vibe. And clearly, this, the current teammates right now that would never have anything to say about it. No, uh, no, are definitely thinking it. And you know, obviously, the head coach has probably got a. You know, he's got a a lot of work to do. Uh, to try to basically revamp this this team, but I, I see them New slam dunk in the third. Yeah, we move on. We're gonna go right to Minnesota. Uh, the this Vikings is... defense again continues to be one of the best defenses in football. That doesn't change. Linval Joseph and Harrison Smith; these guys are great players, and you know it, it's just built upon that. And you know Minnesota's offense was very very questionable last year. Again, I'm not a big fan of Kirk Cousins by any means. Aaron Rodgers is definitely a better quarterback. But I think the defensive side of the ball is going to lead to Minnesota getting more wins than Green Bay in this division. And I'm going to go with Chicago winning it. Uh, I I like the Chicago pick. I, I just think they I'm have going, one of the best defenses in football. I'm going with the same. Not uh, in fantasy, folks. Do not forget. I'm, I'm just throwing this out here just for random thoughts, a fantasy fact for you. You know, that defense has got to take on the Kansas City Chiefs in a very important week. I can't even quote it if it's week 15 or 16. The fact is, 
that's got to take on the Kansas City defense. I mean, the offense of Kansas City in a playoff week uh, in fantasy football. It's not a defense that I'm going to target uh, just on that basis. Uh, it sounds crazy. They might be able to get you points all year long. Don't get me wrong. But that's a defense that if you're looking to draft it, you might want to try to get some interest in trading it. And we all know trading defenses are very difficult to do unless they got, you know, a matchup against, you know, maybe a team like Detroit Lions or something, uh, you know, at home. And maybe you want to get rid of them that week. But, you know, that matchup against Mahomes and company come playoff time, that is not something you want to be a part of. Well, uh, side note, uh, we will be doing our uh, weekly fantasy uh, segment like we used to. Um, I'm just that, throwing a random fantasy back. fact out there yeah, for you absolutely. folks. I love the Bears. I love their defense just as much as anyone. I think they have a great defense. Khalil Mack is one of a kind. Uh, it's just when it comes down to it, uh, that matchup against Mahomes is just not a fun <laughs> matchup. It really yeah. isn't. Whether you like it sounds crazy, but it's the absolute truth. Folks. How many and, of you folks actually thought to look at that stuff? Yeah, that's yeah, something that's you it. need to look. I mean, I mean, I, I love fantasy football. I've been doing it for years and it's really really fun but that is a huge fact to know that you you know you don't want to play a matchup like that I mean obviously anything can happen Mahomes could get hurt we don't know I mean but as of right now on draft day I have no interest in it absolutely none yeah I like but they'll win the listen, division uh, Trubisky I think makes some strides I think that offense continues to move the ball Allen Robinson is such a great talent too there you go there's another fantasy factor for you yeah. do not forget folks that Allen Robinson on the Jacksonville Jaguars with Blake Bortles was a potential first round draft pick yeah. So when you're looking at your fantasy drafts and you see someone like Allen Robinson, oh, the guy hasn't played good in two years, he's injury prone, then pick up that guy. Uh, who's that guy super late that's going for them? For the Bears? Anthony Miller. Pick yeah. up Anthony Miller. You want to pick up somebody like uh, Allen Robinson and take the risk and you know as late as he's going, but I think he's definitely a value in his ADP, barring an injury. Uh, but, yeah, that, that's the end of fantasy facts for me, but I'm just letting you guys know that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, the Bears win this division, though. I feel like uh, Trubisky uh, is going to have a big year. Um, Minnesota, on the other hand, listen, Dalvin Cook's back. That's huge. It's huge for Minnesota's offense. Um, Absolutely. I think it's going to be huge for Kirk Cousins. I don't think Kirk Cousins is good. Um, and he basically, but it makes a job for him. He, yeah, he he swindled Minnesota so much in you know free agency that you know listen. I don't even know what to say about it, but you know what? It gives them a formidable quarterback. Um, but when you add Dalvin Cook to that, it, it makes it so much easier. It makes it so much easier to find Stephon Diggs. It's just you know, and then you have you know Thielen as well. Their offense is is very very good. They have the pieces to win the division as long as Dalvin Cook stays healthy. I mean, they're a possibility to win the division. I just don't know. Kirk Cousins hasn't shown me enough yet. He could prove me wrong this year. He's proved that's, me wrong that, before. Like right there, that's that's the the point um, of winning the division and me putting Chicago to win the division because Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is the reason why I pick Chicago over Minnesota. Yeah. I think this is a very close. Matchup just like the other three divisions that we have that has two teams at the top Dallas and Philly, Atlanta, New Orleans, and Chicago and Minnesota. That's how I look at these three out of the four divisions in the NFC. It really will come down to their matchups during the season, you know. And I, I feel like the wild card to get the wild card spots, it's gonna be a hell of a season. I, I like, I'm excited just to see that point. Hopefully, the Cowboys don't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, I just like I, I think the NFC is is poised for a, a you know a very high power, um, exciting season uh, in the NFC. I, I'm I'm pretty pumped about it. But that's gonna do it for the NFC. Um, again, we're gonna do our uh, weekly you know roundup. I guess you want to say um, we're gonna try to get maybe more than one uh, show in a week, like we were doing before the summer started. Uh, you know, hopefully the the schedules start to yeah they'll start to pan out as we yeah you know, so I, come winter time, folks. I'm I'm not yeah. one of those. I mean, it, I'm not it, going out like, and about during the winter. So to to be totally honest with you, um, I mean, it would be great to get a show before the games. Would be nice. That'd be awesome. Sunday or even morning. like, you know, in the beginning of of the one o'clock games, if we were to just do something like that, like we get we'll think about it uh, off the air. But um, that's gonna do it. For uh, our NFC talk, I'm Jerry. I'm Kevin. Be breezy. Be breezy. And it is all over. You.
You've been listening to Running Up the Score. We run up the score on Sports Radio. For more Running Up the Score, go follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at RUTS Sports.